In my last video I talked about how we tend to have very rigid definitions of what is and what is not matter, and thanks to those very divided views, we have a very rigid definition of what is and what is not spiritual. Well, such rigid boundaries also apply to movement. This is so as a result of our very limited views of what is and what is not action. Most people, especially in this modern and most material world, define action, and therefore movement, as a physical thing. Our limited sensual experience allows us to perceive as real, only a small range of possible perceptions, that we have termed physical reality. Anything that we do not deem as physically real, is not action, it is not real doing, and therefore is not movement. The physical senses, that is our eyes, our ears, the mouth, the nose, and our skin in general, are allowed a very small range of perceptions in accordance with our beliefs, and we tend to completely ignore anything that does not fall within our definition of actual, factual, physical. And even though modern technology and scientific understanding tell us that there is a whole universe out there, a very real and tangible universe, that we are not able to perceive in any way, and yet can still affect us, most of us still insist on imposing many limitations on what we define as actuality, or real life, and what we may term a subjective experience or the imagined. The emotions cannot be seen or felt by the average observer, but they are very real to the person that is experiencing them. Strong emotion can change a person's physiology, actually affecting physical matter. Emotions can cloud perception, change the body chemistry, and can even intensify and expand the nature of personal awareness. Emotions represent movement, they are a type of powerful internal action. And for that matter, even when they lack the raw power of a strong emotional component, any subjective experience, such as a vivid visualization or a daydream for example, is also a type of action and therefore a type of movement, that can greatly alter our lives. Even though we may be sitting quite still from a strictly physical perspective, we could internally be partaking in a flurry of action. As you view this video, and as you hopefully explore your own ideas, and the concepts related to what I am discussing here, you are right now engaged in a flurry of movement yourself, a type of internal movement, that while not perceivable by a witness using just their physical senses, is nonetheless a type of action, and all action involves motion. All internal action is motion. While the demarcations that we use to separate the physical, action, and therefore movement, can help to bring stability to our world, in that it allows us to simplify the nature of our reality, these boundaries are also responsible for greatly limiting our possibilities as well. One can think of it in this fashion. When the mind is relatively young and immature, such boundaries are helpful because they allow the mind to grow and expand, in a stable environment where it is able to stretch out and develop its mental muscles. But as the mind grows stronger and stronger, it naturally craves new limits and pushes itself to develop new forms of expression, perception, and movement. Such a mature mind must be allowed to explore beyond the boundaries of the known, the safe, the supposed real, and it must be challenged with new possibilities. Such a possibility is the expansion of what is and what is not movement. When the mind is able to recognize that movement does not end at the physical, and that there might be limits to physical movement, but that there are other forms of movement, that don't fall under the rulership of the physical boundaries, but that can nevertheless move the mind in ways that are most practical and beneficial, it frees the self to a remarkable degree over time. And through this new freedom, it is able to explore concepts, ideas, and even actual destinations, that it could never hope to reach through physical means alone. A mature mind can then exist in a multitude of different and very real worlds, that are not bound by the laws of the physical plane. 
At this stage it can accept and compartmentalize new and expanded ideas about time and space, and manage different types of laws that apply to the many differing planes of existence that it is now able to access. And it can do this without fear of losing itself and its sanity. Such a mind can grow in power and freedom and can discover other worlds of wonder, that can greatly increase the intellect and the happiness of the individual. Usually people feel that such explorations of inner movement necessitate mind-altering substances, or the mastery of impossible-sounding techniques that seem to require a lifetime to master. The reality is though, that this ability to move without physically moving, is an inherent human ability that can be remastered with far less work than many would suspect. And one could say that the majority of this work is about being flexible enough to adopt a different belief about what is possible, and the desire to then spend time in the subjective state, which then becomes a kind of doing, of not doing. If you would like to know more about the intricacies of internal movement, and how to partake in this kind of movement yourself, I recommend the book. Out of Body Experiences Quickly and Easily. I will leave a link to the book in the video description below.